Hello, everyone, and welcome to Simply Explained English. I am Lisa. And I'm Eric. If you're looking to boost your English in a fun and easy way, you're in the right place. So grab a snack, sit back, and let's dive into today's topic. Okay, what are the words today, Eric? The first word today is jolly. Then, we will continue with to unwind and to chill out, then to tidy up. And the final one is last resort. So let's start with the first word, Eric. The first word is jolly. Jolly is an adjective. It means happy and cheerful. We use it to describe someone who is in a good mood or something that is fun and lively. For example, he is always jolly during the holidays. It means that he is very happy and cheerful when it is holiday time. He probably smiles a lot and spreads good cheer. And for the second sentence, we had a jolly time at the party. It means that we had a lot of fun and everyone was in a good mood at the party. It was a lively and enjoyable event. Great example, Lisa. When using jolly, it's important to remember that it's an adjective. We use it to describe people, events, or even things that make us feel happy and cheerful. Great. Now, let's have a short dialogue using the word jolly. Did you see Mr. Thompson today? He seemed so jolly. Yes, I noticed that too. He was smiling and laughing with everyone. It's nice to see someone in such a jolly mood. It makes the day better. I agree. Seeing him jolly made me feel happier too. Now let's talk about our dialogue. Lisa, what do you think about Mr. Thompson's mood? Well, based on the dialogue, Mr. Thompson was very happy and cheerful today. His jolly mood made Lucy and Jack feel better as well. It's clear that Mr. Thompson's happiness positively affected them. By the way, do you know anybody who is jolly Lisa? Yes, I do. My friend Sarah is always jolly. Being around her makes me feel happier. How about you, Eric? My uncle is a very jolly person, especially during family gatherings. His cheerfulness spreads to everyone. Do you think being jolly is important? Yes, it's important because it can make other people feel better and improve the environment. I agree. A jolly attitude can make challenging situations easier to handle. Do you know any other words that mean the same as jolly? Yes. Words like happy, cheerful, and joyful have similar meanings. Okay, do you want to add anything else about our word today, Eric? Just remember that jolly means happy and cheerful. It's an adjective used to describe someone's mood or atmosphere. And that's it for the word jolly. Okay, Eric, let's move on to our next word. What's the next word? The next word is to unwind. To unwind. To unwind. To unwind is a verb. It means to relax after being busy or stressed. We use it when we want to talk about taking a break and feeling calm. Yes, that's right. For example, I like to unwind by reading a book after work. It means I like to relax and feel calm by reading a book after a busy day at work. It's my way of taking a break and feeling better. Here's another example. She unwinds by listening to music. It means that she relaxes and feels calm by listening to music. It's her way to take a break and feel better. When we use a verb after to unwind, the verb ends with ing form. Like, I will unwind by reading or listening to music. Good point, Lisa. Let's move on to our sample dialogue. In this dialogue, we have two friends Mark and Jane talking about their weekend plans. What are you doing this weekend, Jane? 
I need to unwind, so I'm planning to go to the spa. That sounds great. I like to unwind by hiking in the mountains. Hiking is a good way to unwind, too. Maybe I should try it sometime. In this dialogue, Jane uses the word unwind to talk about her plans to relax at the spa over the weekend. And Mark uses unwind to talk about how he relaxes by hiking in the mountains. Lisa, what do you like to do to unwind after a busy day? I love to unwind by taking a warm bath and reading a good book. It helps me relax and forget about the stress of the day. How about you, Eric? I like to unwind by playing the guitar. Music helps me feel calm and happy. That sounds wonderful. Do you think it's important to find time to unwind? Yes, definitely. Taking time to unwind helps us feel better and be more productive. It's important for our health. I agree. Do you have any tips for our listeners on how to unwind effectively? I think finding a quiet place and doing something you enjoy is key. It could be reading, listening to music, or even taking a walk in nature. Great tips, Eric. It's important to find what works best for you and make time for it. I completely agree. Okay, let's move on to our next word. What's the next word, Eric? The next word is chill out. Chill out. Chill out. Chill out is a phrasal verb. It means to relax and not worry about things. Here's an example sentence. After a long day at work, I like to chill out and watch TV. It means that after a long day at work, I like to relax and watch TV to feel better. Here's another example. You should chill out and not stress about the test. It means that you should relax and not worry too much about the test. Now, let's briefly discuss some grammar related to chill out. This phrase is a phrasal verb and is often used in informal contexts. You can use it in the imperative form to give advice, like chill out, or in statements like I need to chill out. Great. Now, let's have a short dialogue using the phrase chill out. In this dialogue, we'll have two friends, Emma and Tom, talking at a park. You seem stressed, Tom. What's wrong? I have so much homework to do. I don't know how I'll finish it all. You should chill out and take a break. It will help you feel better. You're right. I'll chill out for a while and then start again. What do you think about Tom's situation, Lisa? Well, Tom is very stressed about his homework. Emma suggests he should chill out and take a break to feel better. Emma's advice is good. Taking a break and relaxing can help reduce stress. That's right. Have you ever had to tell someone to chill out, Lisa? Yes, I often tell my sister to chill out when she gets too worried about small things. How about you? I sometimes tell my friends to chill out when they get too stressed about exams. Do you think it's easy to chill out when you're stressed? No, it can be hard to relax when you're stressed. But it's important to try. What do you think? I agree. Finding ways to chill out, like listening to music or going for a walk, can really help. Lisa, do you know any other phrases that mean the same as chill out? Yes. Phrases like relax, calm down, and take it easy have similar meanings. Great. Just remember that chill out means to relax and not worry too much. It's a phrasal verb used in informal situations. Thank you for the explanation, Eric. Now, let's explain the next word. The next word is tidy up. Tidy up. Tidy up. To tidy up means to make a place neat and organized by putting things in their proper places. It's about cleaning and arranging things to make an area look nice and orderly. That's right. Can you give some example sentences, Eric? Sure. Here's my example. I need to tidy up my room before my friends come over. It means I need to clean and organize my room put things away, and make it look neat before my friends visit. 
good explanation. Here's my example. Mom asked us to tidy up the living room after the party. It means that after the party, Mom wanted us to clean the living room and put everything back in its place to make it look organized again. Great. Tidy up is a phrasal verb. We can use it as tidy up or tidy something up. That's right. We can also use it in different tenses, like I am tidying up or she tidied up. Now, let's hear a dialogue using this phrase. Ready, Lisa? Ready. Tommy, your room is a mess. Can you tidy up before dinner? Do I have to, Mom? I'm playing a game. Yes, you do. If you tidy up now, you can play more after dinner. Okay, I'll tidy it up. But can you help me? Sure, I'll help you start. Let's tidy up your toys first. That was a nice dialogue, Eric. Why did Mom want Tommy to tidy up? Mom wanted Tommy to tidy up because his room was messy. She wanted it clean before dinner time. That's right. And how did Tommy react at first? At first, Tommy didn't want to tidy up because he was playing a game, but then he agreed when Mom offered to help. Exactly. Do you think it's important to tidy up regularly, Eric? Yes, I do. Keeping things tidy helps us find things easily and makes our space more pleasant. What do you think, Lisa? I agree. A tidy space can also help us feel more relaxed and organized. Do you like to tidy up, Eric? I don't always enjoy it, but I feel good after I tidy up my room. How about you, Lisa? I try to tidy up a little bit every day. It's easier than doing a big cleanup once a week. That's a good idea. What's your best tip for tidying up? I think it helps to have a place for everything. Then it's easier to put things back. I agree. In this way, it can be very easy to tidy up. Absolutely. Well, that's all we have time for with this phrase. Remember, listeners, to tidy up means to make a place neat and organized. Exactly. Now, it is time to explain the last word. The last word today is last resort. Last resort. Last resort. Last resort is a phrase. It means the final option when no other choices are left. Here's an example sentence. If we can't find a hotel, sleeping in the car is our last resort. It means that if we can't find a hotel, the only option left is to sleep in the car. Here's another example. They used their emergency savings as a last resort. It means that using their emergency savings was the final option after trying everything else. Now, let's briefly discuss some grammar related to last resort. This phrase is a noun phrase and is often used with as a last resort or hour before it, like as a last resort or our last resort. Now, let's have a short dialogue using the phrase last resort. In this dialogue, we'll have two friends, Amy and Ben, talking about their travel plans. What if the train is fully booked? If the train is fully booked, we can take a bus as a last resort. I hope it doesn't come to that. I prefer the train. Me too, but at least having a last resort is better than nothing. Now, let's talk about our dialogue. Lisa, what do you think about Amy and Ben's situation? Well, based on the dialogue, Amy and Ben prefer to take the train, but if it's fully booked, their last resort is to take a bus. What do you think about their backup plan, Eric? I think it's smart to have a last resort. It ensures they still have a way to travel. Have you ever had to use a last resort, Lisa? Yes, once I had to stay at a friend's house as a last resort when my flight was canceled. How about you, Eric? I had to walk home as a last resort when my car broke down and there were no taxis. Do you think having a last resort is important? Yes, having a last resort helps us stay prepared for unexpected situations. What do you think? I agree. It's always good to have a backup plan. Okay, 
Last resort means the final option when no other choices are left. It's a noun phrase used to describe the ultimate backup plan. That's right, Eric. Well, that's it for today's episode. Thank you for listening to Simply Explained English. We hope you learned something new today. And enjoyed learning with us. Don't forget to subscribe and like our videos. Until next time, keep practicing and have fun with English. Bye for now and happy learning.